Continuing the Bioshock review with Bioshock Infinite. Again, I played it first time during the release on Xbox 360 at 2013. Originally, there's not really remaster of this one, but it has been released with Bioshock Complete Package to many modern consoles. Developed by Irrational Games and published by 2K Games, it was released 2013 for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 and later for Mac OS and Linux. The game is set in the 1912 and follows the story of Booker DeWitt, a former Pinkerton detective who is sent to the floating city of Columbia to find and rescue a young woman named Elizabeth. Plot is something I will talk in the end and will let you know when the plot talk start starts. Minor spoilers might be included while talking or the stuff about it. Infinite alone might not be that mind-blowing of an experience, but with the two single-player DLCs are necessary for the whole trilogy to wrap up. Like the previous games in the series, players explore a complex intricate world filled with danger and mystery. In this case, the world is floating city of Colombia, a utopian society that's been torn apart by political and social unrest. Players must navigate the city's many areas, engaging in combat with various enemies, interacting with the environment and collecting items and resources along the way. You play Booker DeWitt, who is sent to find the girl. Combat in Bioshock Infinite is more fast-paced. Players use variety of weapons to defeat enemies, although only being able to carry two at a time. They can also use Vigos, this game's plasmids, which are powers that grant them unique abilities such as telekinesis or the ability to create explosive traps. Skyhook, a grappling hook that allows them, allows them to quickly move around and the environment is added to gain that, that tactical advantage and finish off enemies. One of the key features in Bioshock Infinite's gameplay is Elizabeth, the young woman who players are sent to the rescue. Elizabeth plays a crucial role in the game's story and her abilities also impact the gameplay. She can open tears in reality, which can change the environment or summon useful items such as cover or turrets. She can also provide players with ammo or health during combat. In addition to combat, Bioshock Infinite features a number of RPG-style elements. Players can collect infusions, which can be used to increase their shield, health and waker powers. They can also collect gear, which is items that provide various passive bonuses, such as increased damage or reduced damage taken. Overall, Bioshock Infinite's gameplay is well-balanced mix of exploration, combat and RPG elements that rewards players for creative thinking and strategic planning. Bioshock Infinite features a wide variety of guns that players can use to take on enemies in combat. Each weapon has its own unique strengths and weaknesses and players can upgrade their weapons with various modifications found throughout the game. Some of the more traditional guns in the game include pistols, shotguns and rifles. The pistols are fast and accurate, while the shotguns pack a powerful punch up close. The rifles on the other hand are most versatile, allowing players to engage enemies at medium or long range. There are also no more unique weapons, such as the hand cannon, a powerful revolver that can take out enemies with just well, well paced shot and the volley gun, a heavy weapon that launches a barrage of explosive rounds at enemies. Vigors add abilities to set enemies fire or ability to summon crows to attack enemies. These vigors can be upgraded over time and make them even more effective in combat. Overall, Bioshock Infinite offers players a wide variety of guns and abilities to choose from, allowing them to tailor their combat style to their individual preference. Whether players prefer to take stealthy approach or charge in guns blazing, there's, there's weapon or wicker that will suit your playstyle. Play Wiggers do work better than previous games, plasmids, as the usage of them seems to be more balanced to me. So in this sense, it only comes to a personal preference, like how I love to use Murder of Crows almost 
exclusively. One of the most unique aspects of combat in Bearship Infinite is the use of Skyhook. Players can use it to quickly move around the environment, allowing them to quickly flank enemies or escape dangerous situations. They can also use the perform Skyline Strikes, which are powerful most of the time one-shot melee attacks that deal massive damage to enemies. Elizabeth can toss your ammunition, new guns, great turrets or skyhook places uh, and it pays the player for thinking fast. Enemies. The most common enemies in the game are Columbia citizens. These brainwashed citizens of Columbia will attack the player on site and can use a variety of weapons, just the same ones that the player can have access to. They are often encountered in groups and will work together to take down player. Motorized patriots are robotic enemies that are modeled after American historical figures such as George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. They carry heavy weapons and are resistant to damage, making them formidable foes. They can also summon shields to protect themselves and nearby enemies. Handymen are towering humanoid enemies that are heavily armored and difficult to defeat. They can jump long distances and deal massive amounts of damage with their fists. They are also resistant to many types of damage, making them formidable foes. There's also more unique enemy called Boys of Silence, which are blind enemies that use sound to detect player. They emit a high-pitched noise that can alert other enemies to the player's presence, making them a unique and challenging opponent. But these, these enemies you encounter only in one place of the game. Bioshock Infinite was generally well received by both critics and fans of the series, although opinions on its quality compared to other games in the series is extremely mixed. The game received numerous awards and nominations for its story, characters and gameplay with particular praise going to its intricate narrative and themes. The game's use of floating city of Columbia as a setting was also widely praised with many critics noting the level of detail and creativity that went into the design. However, some fans of the series felt the Bioshock Infinite di diverged too far from the themes and gameplay mechanics of the previous games, and criticized its more linear structure and simplified combat system. Additionally, some critics felt that the game's ending was confusing and unsatisfying. Overall, while Bioshock Infinite may not have been universally hailed as the best entry in the series, it was still widely regarded as a well-crafted and enjoyable game that continued the legacy of the franchise. Infinite again hits me similarly like the first and second games in this series in the visual design. It also was praised for its stunning and immersive graphics during the release, which were a significant step up from previous games in the series. The game's art style was heavily influenced by the aesthetics of 20th century, particularly architecture, fashion and art deco, and American Renaissance periods. This gave the game a unique and striking look that was distinct from other first-person shooters on the market at that time, and I don't think there is another game that captures the Bioshock Infinite look to this date. In addi ad addition to its art style, Bioshock Infinite featured improved technical graphics, including detailed character models, realistic lighting and shadow effects, and high-quality textures. The game also made use of dynamic weather and environmental effects to further enhance its immersive world building. Though these are extremely limited in this game, but they are there. Overall, Bioshock Infinite's graphics were widely praised by both fans and critics, with many revive, uh, reviewers noting that the game's visuals were some of the best in the industry at the time of its release. I will be now talking about the story of the game. In Bioshock Infinite, the concept of time loop is a crucial element of the story. The game begins with Booker DeWitt arriving in the floating city of Columbia, tasked with rescuing a young woman named Elizabeth from her captors. 
along the way he learns that Elizabeth has incredible powers to manipulate space and time and that she has been held captive by the city's ruler Zachary Comstock, who claims to be prophet of the Lord. As Booker and Elizabeth make their way through Columbia, they become embroiled in a conflict between the ruling class and the Vox Populi, a group of working class citizens who seek to overthrow them. Booker also begins to uncover the web of conspiracies and alternative dimensions that threaten to destroy not just Columbia but the entire world. Eventually it is revealed that Booker and Comstock are actually the same person, separated by different versions of reality. In one timeline, Booker refused to have his daughter, Anna, baptized and instead sold her to Comstock's reality as a way to pay off his gambling debts. This led Anna being taken to Columbia and renamed Elizabeth, where she was kept a captive until Booker arrived to rescue her. As the two travel through Columbia and alternative realities, Elizabeth discovers that she has the power to open tears in reality and allowing her and Booker to travel between these different timelines and dimensions. They eventually learn that Comstock is actually the version of Booker who traveled to the parallel reality where he became a hero and founded Columbia, but also became increasingly fanatical and authoritarian. In the game's climatic final act, it's revealed that the true goal of Comstock and the ruling class of Columbia is to create a sacrifice that will allow them to continue their rule and maintain their reality. This sacrifice turns out to be Elizabeth, who is revealed to be a version of Anna, who gained her powers as a result of traumatic experience in Columbia. In order to stop Comstock and save Elizabeth, Booker must travel to reality where he accepted the baptism and became a martyr in fight against Comstock. In this reality, he confronts version of himself who has embraced his role as a hero and sacrifice himself to prevent Comstock from ever existing. The game's ending sequence shows a montage of different realities, suggesting that the events of the game have created a multiverse of infinite possibilities. The final scene shows Booker arriving at the scene that echoes the beginning of the game, suggesting that the cycle of events may be destined to reboot indefinitely. In addition to the main story, Persic Infinite also explores themes such as American exceptionalism, racism, and danger of nationalism and religious extremism. It also features memorable characters such as Enigmatic Sengbird and explores the complex relation between Booker and Elizabeth.